Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, today I will tell you about China's maritime law enforcement reform and its implication on this uh, on the regional maritime dispute. The Chinese government announced in March 2013 its plan to centralize a bureaucratic control over its maritime law enforcement agencies. Its decision to combine its parent maritime law enforcement bodies into an integrated one under the State Oceanic Administration or SOA. A part of the Ministry of Land and Natural Resources or MLR, China's maritime law enforcement reform implemented after years of debate on the country's maritime enforcement capacity has met with different responses within the country and from the region. Suspicion within China arises from obstacles to uh, bureaucratic reconciliation among formerly separate agencies. There are also bifurcated reaction from the neighboring countries that have disputed with China on territorial and maritime jurisdiction. Some welcome this move because they believe that a United Civilian Maritime Law Enforcement Agency will reduce the risk or conflict at sea. Others question whether a unified agency will allow China to be more assertive in pursuing its interests in the territorial and maritime dispute in the East and South China Sea. Four agencies are now slated for consolidation under the SOA. The first is China Maritime Surveillance and then Maritime Border Police, the Fishing Regulation Administration, and General Administration of Customs. The fifth dragon, the Maritime Safety Administration under the Ministry of Transport in charge of Navigational Safety and Search and Rescue Mission is not listed in official statement on the merger. Sources in China suggest that the MSE strongly opposed the merger, making a strong case that it is also involved in supervising navigation in the numerous ri uh, rivers in China. This objection aside, China sees the merger as crucial because its facial are increasingly on the front lines of clashes between China and other states in the East and the South China Sea. The reform aims at enhancing China's maritime law enforcement capacities in a more controlled and coordinated manner. Meanwhile, the reform could significantly improve response time, reduce redundancy, strengthen communication, and bolster overall command and control mechanism. Two objectives may be achieved through the, ma uh, the merger. First, a unified force will, be, uh, will better be able to pursue national objectives. And then second, it will reduce the change the uncoordinated action by separate commanders trigger un unintended escalation and conflict at sea. It is unclear, however, how fast these reform measures will be implemented, and there are several organizational uncertainties. First, it's appeared uh, that the new agency will be under the dual leadership of the SOA and Ministry of Public Security, which has traditionally exercised supervision of China's border control forces. How this dual leadership will affect the op operation of the new entity remains to be seen. Second, the restructure plan also calls for the establishment of a high-level consultation and coordinating body on maritime operations, named State Ocean Commission. The composition and functions of SOC are still unclear whether this commission will conflict or overlap with the small leadership group is also an open question. Third, Perhaps more importantly for the region, it is unclear whether the new agency will be equipped with heavy arms. The MBP under the Ministry of Public Security has always been armed. It is unclear whether all the boats of the new China Maritime Law Enforcement Agency will be armed. And then the fourth. 
It is also hard to predict whether the reform will be implemented without organizational obstacles from the formed five dragons. This new integrated agency highlights the increasing importance of China's Coast Guard, as distinct from its Navy. Coast Guard and navies are mandated with different responsibilities. While navies have the mandate for the defense of a country and its interests offshore, Coast Guard have the civilian mandate of mar marine safety and security. In some countries, uh, the Coast Guard has the full spectrum of responsibilities, which include marine safety and homeland security. Others use mainly multitasking of their marine services through cooperation and coordination, but with strong government strategic direction and priorities. Despite the cooperation and coordination nature between Coast Guard and navies, there is a fundamental cut of different mission between them. In maritime areas beyond national jurisdiction, such as high seas, only navies can legitimately exercise authority as flag states. In maritime areas within a national jurisdiction, such as a territorial sea, contiguous zone, or exclusive economic zone, both navies and Coast Guard can exercise their function with different mission. What is distinct is the different impact in terms of pursuing national maritime interests. Naval involvement in an incident or crisis will raise concern about the use of force, or be perceived as an escalatory while Coast Guard or other civil maritime enforcement agencies will mitigate this concern. The important role that China's civilian maritime agencies play has been demonstrated in the South China Sea and the East uh, and the East China Sea through its engagement within I'm sorry with the Philippines and Japan during the Scar uh, Scarborough Shoals incident of 2012. Observers will recall that China engaged the Philippines with two unarmed CMS vessels. Despite the fact that the Philippines vessel was the Gregorio del Pilar, a naval warship. Some have charged that China's strategy involves keeping its naval vessels lurking in the background, but, it's, uh, but it is important to remember that they were not introduced in this case. Since 2012, China's law enforcement vessels have also taken the lead in patrolling the contiguous zone and territorial waters of the Senkaku or Diao Islands. I'm sorry, of the Senkaku and Diao Islands, and the tempo of patrols has increased by both sides. There has also uh, been an increased presence by military vessels from both China and Japan. But China's CMS and FR, FRA vessels take the lead in asserting its right in the area. There are at least three possible strategic and security implications derived from the ongoing structural reform of China's maritime law enforcement. First, a, uni a united agency now officially called China's Coast Guard. Reflect the decision of China's leadership to enhance its maritime law enforcement capability and to transform it into a maritime power. China seems to be to believe that a civilian enforcement force serves the to mitigate the conflict at sea and avoid direct military confrontation with other dispute, disputant states in the East China Sea and the South China Sea. The second major implication is that a stronger Chinese enforcement entity serves to promote China's rapidly growing soft power both in the Asia-Pacific and around the globe. 
The third implication is the relationship between PLA Navy and the new China Coast Guard. The PLA Navy formerly had the capacity of only an elaborate Coast Guard and now emphasize technology-intensive warfare. It shows interest in issues that are traditionally Coast Guard responsibility including search and rescue, environmental protection, and piracy. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. See you the next video, and bye-bye.